Okay, so we're going to take this uh, like this question right here. Hi, Rabbi Singer, I have a question for you. I've been watching your program, and I haven't heard this one question asked uh, from the New Testament, where it says in John 6, 14, 6, that Jesus said to his disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And so I'd like you to explain that from your viewpoint, if you would, please. One of the things that surprise folks who study the Christian Bible is that roughly 90% of what we encounter in the book of John is found nowhere in the Synoptic Gospels. And in each and every case, John is presenting us with not just a higher Christology, which means that Jesus is portrayed as divine or much more divine than in the book of Mark, which was almost certainly written earliest, written about the time of the destruction of the Second Temple, meaning written about 65, let's say 70. And when we view Mark, we encounter a gospel where the author has no idea that there's anything unusual about Jesus' conception or birth. In fact, we can be sure of this because as far as Mark is concerned, his own family has no clue that Jesus is something special. On the contrary, in Mark chapter 3, his family, they want to drag him away because they think he's essentially out of his mind. This should come as an enormous surprise to readers because the mother, according to Luke, had a whole conversation with the angel Gabriel in the Annunciation in Luke's infancy narrative. Joseph would have had a whole conversation with the angel as far as Matthew's infancy narrative is concerned. If anybody knew that Jesus was special, it would have been his own family. John is later. John is 30 years later. Matthew and Luke are, let's say, 10 to 15 years later than Mark. John has written somewhere 90, 95, so it's, let's say, 10, 15 years after Matthew and Luke. Jesus is now elevated to some form of deity. Now, when I say that, it does not mean that whoever wrote the book of John believed in the Trinity or the homoousia that emerges out of the Council of Nicaea. That's far, far more improved than any author of the Christian Bible had ever conceived, but it's a much higher Christology. Jesus walking around saying, I am, I am, I am. In fact, we find these seven I am's in the book of John that are very striking. That itself is completely unique to John. If Jesus was walking around saying these things, did Mark just think that wasn't important enough to report? The answer is that it just wasn't a part of a Christian thinking when Mark was written, but it is later. So at first glance, when we find I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one can come to the Father but by me, on the surface, we just see a, a trajectory. Jesus adopted as God's Son at the baptism in Mark. We then see a later theology developing where Jesus becomes the Son of God at his conception in Luke, certainly, and Matthew. And then finally, John, he was there from. Uh, so this translates into what we discover in John, and that is Jesus is speaking about himself. John 14, it finds itself inside the what's called the farewell discourse, which essentially takes up all of John. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. It's the longest narrative by far in the Christian Bible. So at first glance, we say, well, Christianity just was headed in a certain direction. And then by the time we get to John, written 90, 95, it's, we're seeing a lot of idolatry and the Messiah now is elevated, right? which is true. But there, there's something else that's happening here. And that is the dualism of the, of the eschatology. Eschatology is the, a Greek word from the word eschaton, which means the end of times. And this needs to be explained as well. As far as Mark is concerned, Jesus' transformation of the world, what is going to happen as a result of Jesus' coming, is linear and it is horizontal meaning that 
the change that's going to occur as a result of Jesus' ministry is one that's going to happen during the lifetime of those who are observing it. See Mark chapter 9, verse 1. See Mark chapter 13, verse 30. There are many of you here who will not taste of death until these things unfold. Now, certainly, when the book of Mark is written, there were probably people alive at the time who were Christians during the first 30 years of the first century. It's very unlikely there were very many people by 95 who were alive. In the ancient world, people didn't live very long. In fact, that's why in Christian tradition, the author of the book of John, who is one of the disciples, John the son of Zebedee, it's, all, it's inconceivable that's the same person. But we'll set that aside. John lived to like be 95 or 100 years old. They want him to live that long because they knew it's so late. So the key is in 70, you could say, that this generation will not pass until you will see the glory, the full power of the kingdom of heaven. In fact, when Jesus is standing before Caiaphas, the high priest, and he's being accused, are you claiming to be the Messiah, the Son of the living God? And then Jesus says to him, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One coming on the clouds of heaven, which is no doubt a reference to the coming of the Messiah and a connection to Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Let's just break that all down. What Jesus is saying to the high priest, who is definitely not a Christian, is you are going to see these things happen. And we find the same thing in Luke chapter 21, verse 32. You're going to see this happen. It's going to happen this generation. But by the time we get to 9095, guess what? No one is alive. By the time John is written, nobody's alive, or very few people would have been alive. And therefore, the target has to be moved. You can't have your presentation of God's kingdom cannot be one on earth where the world is changed and transformed. Rather, the promise has to change. You're never going to find that in the book of John, that there are many of you standing here who will not taste of death. Never. Nothing remotely resembling that. Why? (laughs) Because it didn't happen. So therefore, the goalposts have to be shifted. And the goalposts in the book of John is that, in fact, the horizontal, meaning now, you know, things are tough, I'm going to die, but you're going to see the the Son of Man coming in full power and glory in the clouds of heaven, and you will not taste of death. That can work in the book of Mark. That can't work in the year 95. That can work in 70 and 65. That can never work in 90. So therefore, the whole target is, is shifted. The goals have to be shifted to that the kingdom that is coming is one a heavenly kingdom. And in fact, we, we find this out very quickly in John chapter 3, in Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus, a conversation which could not have occurred, and I'm not going into why, but linguistically it couldn't occur. But let's just work with it, because we're interested not in history right now, but what is happening So Jesus is conveying to Nicodemus that you need to be born from above. That's the key. There's a double entendre in that in Greek, to be born from above or to be born again is the same word. That's why the conversation couldn't happen is because they would have been speaking Aramaic, not Greek. And Aramaic, there would be two different words. Let's stay, let's not go off the rails here. The key is, that what Jesus is promising Nicodemus is that the kingdom that's coming is not of this world at all. This final kingdom is from above. It's one that's a heavenly kingdom, and the only path to it is not remaining here like Caiaphas and then finally seeing, oh boy, what's happening, because all those people died. Everyone died, whether they were Christians or were not Christians, everybody's gone. The promise then is something that's totally changed, and that is, it's not in this world. It's going to be something heavenly. Now, once it's heavenly, so then it's restricted only to those who are followers of Jesus. 
If you're not a follower of Jesus, you're not going to heaven. If you're not a follower of Jesus, you cannot get to the Father. No one can come to the Father but by me. So John 14, 6 reflects a transformation of the Christian heaven and eternity and eschatology. Rather than being the one that is an earthly kingdom of God, and of course, the transformation of this world, but the goalposts are changed. See John 14 as this is a whole new ballgame. The whole new ballgame is it isn't happening here, it's happening in heaven. If it's happening in heaven, Jesus then is the only conduit to get to the Father. John is a high Christology in a Greek sense. And John has changed the goalposts entirely. And that's why all these texts that we find in the Synoptic Gospels everywhere are nowhere to be found in John. And these I am texts, whether it's John 8 and so on, all that has changed completely and, in fact, did not even exist in the Synoptic Gospels, that of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So thank you very much for that question. And um, I'm glad we were able to discuss this here on air. Shalom. Adon olah, asher malach, v'terem kol yetzir nivra, v'et nasa, v'chev tzokol, azai melech, azai melech, shemu nikra. Thank you.